Behind me is a boiler that we're currently restoring at the Big South Fork Railroad for the K&T number 14, which is a 060 switch locomotive. And uh, this is really a neat project and we're excited to be part of it. And we're going to talk a little bit more about how you can be involved in the project as well at the end of the video, so you'll want to stay tuned for the rest of the video. But a few weeks ago there was a discussion on RYPN about rivets and riveting techniques. And I thought I would do a short little video for you on riveting and some of the things that I think are personally important with riveting. Because today we're actually going to be putting hot rivets in this boiler. And so we'll actually get to go through the entire process and show you a little bit about how this works. And uh, again, what I think are some of the more important aspects of riveting. Now, with all of my videos, and this one's going to be no different, I'm going to try to put everything in a fairly short video. So there's going to be some details that, I'm, that I either leave out intentionally because I don't have the time for them, uh, or there's going to be some details that I just don't get to cover because I don't have time for them. So we'll hope that you enjoy the pieces that I'm going to give to you and, and view this as something that might be a little bit of an educational process. And clearly, if you have any questions about riveting, feel free to contact me. Uh, there are a lot of other professionals in our industry that do a lot of riveting that are very good at it. Uh, a lot of what I'm going to teach today uh, comes from things that I've been taught, things that I've worked on with uh, other people and, and my mentors in the industry. And hopefully this is just a, a mentorship for you and a little bit of an education. So let's jump into rivets for just a minute. One of the questions that was on RYPN is which direction do we put the rivet in the hole when we're doing rivets? I personally like to make sure that the preformed portion of the rivet, which is the top piece here in my hand, uh, is the that this end of the rivet is the end that would be on the outside of the boiler. Now I personally like to do that for a reason and my reason behind it is this head is already formed and it's finished. So if I put this in the hole and I run my guns, my backing guns on the outside to keep this head form the way that it needs to and expand the rivet inside of the hole a little bit on the outside. When I'm all done with my riveting job, all of my heads should line up fairly in line with the original holes that are in the mud ring. One of the problems that we have with riveting is when you're forming the other end of the rivet and you're putting the head on it, which will eventually look like this end of the rivet, what you have a problem with is you can actually walk the head of the rivet off to one side of the actual shank of the rivet. And what we call that is it's an eccentric head is what it is because the head, the center of the head, isn't in the same center as the shank. So we want to prevent getting an eccentric head on the shank to, the, to, to our best ability, the, the best that we can really. And so when you're driving that rivet and you're putting the head on it, you want to make sure that you're keeping that head as close to the center of the shank that you possibly can. Now this can be tricky because when you've got that rivet hot and it wants to move around and if your hole isn't the right size, your hole's just a little bit bigger, when you get on that gun and you start to form that head, it's easy. It really is easy to push that head up and off or not in line with the rest of that shank. One of the things that we practice as a team before we get into riveting is actually putting the rivet in the hole, putting the gun on top of the rivet, and making sure that our gun is lined up parallel and perpendicular to where we want to put that rivet in. Because if we find out that we're, we're, we have a habit of putting the gun on the rivet, but the gun's on an angle, what's going to happen is when we start that gun and we start hammering, all we're going to do is push that head right off. You can actually push a head completely off of the shank of a rivet when you're putting rivets in uh, to where you're left with nothing. You just drive it clean off. In fact, if you, if you really want to, you can take the gun and you can come up from the bottom of it and you can just cut the rivet right off, right in the hole. So there's a lot of mistakes that can be made, but if you're doing it properly and you're spending some time and you're focusing on what you're doing, you should be able to get that rivet in nice and clean. Now, one of the things that I want to explain about a rivet, now, the rivet that I'm holding in my hand right now is not necessarily the, the right size for these holes. I just picked one up out of the bucket to bring up a, as an example. But one of the things that's important to remember about a good riveting job is the rivet is supposed to fill the hole. 
So just follow me for a second. When you heat up a rivet, that rivet's going to expand a little bit. The shank's going to expand a little bit. So you really can't have a perfect size diameter rivet go in a perfect size hole. You're going to have to have a little bit of offset one way or another between rivets and holes. Now that's not necessarily a bad thing because once you get that rivet in that hole and you start hammering on it, the idea is that we're not just putting a head on both ends of the rivet, but that we're actually filling the hole between the two heads with material. In an ideal world, we would fill the entire hole with the metal, or in other words, as we make the head on the outside, in my case, I like to do it uh, hammering from the inside. If we're filling the hole and putting the head on the inside, ideally, when you start to smash that rivet in the hole, that, that rivet's going to fill up that entire hole all the way through. Now, the reality is, does the rivet fill the entire hole 100% of the time? And the answer to that is not necessarily. When we go through these boilers and we take these rivets out, a lot of times we'll take a torch, we'll cut the inside out, we'll cut the outside out, and then we'll take a big hammer and we'll ram what's left of the rivet out of the hole. And a lot of times what you'll find is a rivet or a piece of a rivet that's about this long that uh, has a little bow in it or a bend where it did not fill the entire hole. The outside edges filled the hole, maybe into an inch or even two inches, but you'll be left with the center section sometimes that didn't fill the entire hole. Again, ideally we want to fill the entire hole. Realistically, we're not always going to fill the entire hole. Which brings us into my last comment about riveting and then we're gonna show you a little bit about how we do rivets at Wasatch. My last comment about riveting is, there is a such thing as getting a rivet too hot. There is also a such thing as getting a rivet too cold. And in my personal opinion, both of those are bad. Uh, and I can't pick one or the other as being, well, if we had them all hot, is that good? Or if they're all cold, is that better? Neither one's a good situation. You want those rivets at the right temperature, not too hot not too cold, but at the right temperature, so you can accurately form a head on the end of the, of the rivet, making sure that that head is, is as concentric as possible to the rivet shank. You wanna make sure that that rivet fills the hole to the best of your ability, realizing that it may or may not fill the complete hole, and last but not least, as that rivet cools, that it cools and it sucks together and it pulls everything tight. If I can with the microphone, I'm going to hold the microphone up after we do some riveting and let you hear what it sounds like to listen to those rivets contract and pull all that metal together. It's a fascinating sound and you can sit there and just listen to it go. And I wish I had, <clears throat> excuse me, I wish I had microscopic vision because I believe you'd almost be able to see the metal sheets pulling together uh, as, that, as that rivet gets colder. So those are, again, just a couple of points, a couple of key things that I think are really important when you're considering a rivet job. If you've never riveted before and you're considering doing it, Make sure that you've got the right material. Make sure that you've got the right tools. Make sure that you've tested your tools out. Make sure that you've done a couple of test examples with your rivets. And if you don't like things or it's not going right, please call somebody. Again, you're more than welcome to call me. There's a number of other professionals out there that are really interested in this riveting thing that will be more than happy to help you. One last thing before we go watch the riveting. The ASME and the National Board right now are working on riveting rules and riveting repairs. It's been something that's been taken out of the code for a long time. It hasn't been there. Some of these things are going to come back, and as these things come back into the codes or into the rules and regulations that we use, there's going to be more information that's going to be put out to you and the public uh, so that you can learn more about how to do this and how to do it properly. So let's go watch the guys put in a couple of hot rivets.
So we gave you a little bit of a glimpse of how we put a couple rivets in. Now it's important to remember that a few of those rivets that we put in were our test rivets. We were just making sure that we had the length right. We were going to be able to form the head that we wanted. We actually took a couple out and put a couple back in. But now we have our process down. We'll be able to finish the rest of that sheet out. We're going to do that tomorrow. So hope you enjoyed watching a little bit of the, the rivets going in. Now look. This project here at Big South Fork is unique because we're allowing volunteers to come in and help with the project. So if you're interested in volunteering, we want you to contact Bill Johnson. His name and contact information and phone number is right here on the bottom of the screen right now. And then it's going to be shown again at the end of the video. We're doing a volunteer project right now in April. We're going to be doing another one in May, which is the weekend of 17, 18, 19 of May. So if you're interested in coming and volunteering for the Big South Fork Railroad, uh, working on this locomotive with us, helping us put it back together, we'd love to have you. Just contact Bill Johnson. Uh, he'll get you involved and get you out with the project, and we'd love to have you. One last thing before we leave, we're also having an open house at Wasatch Railroad the same weekend, which is May 17, 18, and 19 in Cheyenne, Wyoming. There's going to be a lot of events. We're going to leave you with a little bit more information at the end of this video about our open house. And as always, send us a note on Facebook or send us a note on YouTube. Let us know what other questions you have about steam locomotives, and we'll answer them the best that we can. We'll look forward to seeing you on our next episode. Thanks for watching.